Ba, 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 ba. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Thank you, Candace. Yes, what's going on? Happy Monday. This is our Married to Medicine weekly recap. Candace said, Campfire had a wonderful show on Friday. DC definitely showed up and showed out. You guys sure did. We will we will make a little bit of the audio available for our podcast, but we're only making a little bit available because we want you guys to come out and see the Kempire After Dark experience. Again, shout out to those of you that came out to our Washington D, our sold out Washington DC show on Friday in DC, which was so much fun. And uh, shout out to those of you that came to the New York City show that was sold out as well. If you're a member of the channel, Royal, not Royal, Senior Royals, you still have the actual video footage. Well, part of the, the actual video footage of the New York City show. Um, we will be making the audio of that available for our podcast this week. So be sure to subscribe to the Kempire podcast. And I gave you an update on the podcast today in regards to the Porsche Gobadia situation. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Let's get into our Married to Medicine recap because it's dinner time and I really have not eaten today. It's been one of those days. I mean, I've, I've eaten a little bit, but I, I, I'm waiting to have a really good dinner, <laughs> right? Not that you care, but you guys know. You all hit me up to have you eaten today. Right before my show, I did not eat because, well, I ate during the day, but not right before because I also don't want to have the itis while I'm also trying to give you a show. Plus, I was showing chest, so I wanted the stomach to be... <laughs> <laughs> i'm being honest i'm being honest shout out to our channel members shout out to our king's guards and of course shout out to our subscribers let's get into our married to medicine recap if we can baby baby won't you listen to me i got that flavor i know you're dying to feed i ain't no dancer just got some hip in my feet now throw your hands up I got the fuse, you make a fire, I'll add the fuel, follow my lead it. just watch the shoes, gotta turn the heat up, to get this cool. Welcome back to the Kempire channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're listening to this, don't forget you can hear and take us on the go by subscribing to the Kempire podcast. And that's also where you can get special episodes where we talk about, you know, a variety of different things that I just don't feel fit necessarily here on the Kempire channel. But don't forget, you can also watch a visual version of our podcast on the Kempire Radio YouTube channel. That's also our backup channel. So shout out to all of you that are already subscribed. But we have over 345,000 of you here on Kempire's channel. Head on over to the Kempire Radio YouTube channel just in case. God forbid. God forbid anything ever happened over here. God forbid. God forbid. Boop, 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 boop. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Anyways, guys, this is our Married to Medicine recap. If you guys had to rate this week's episode of Married to Medicine between 1 and 10, how would you rate it? Our YouTube fam are definitely rating it pretty high this week. Married to Medicine is still doing very well in regards to our ratings here on the channel. They have, what, 65% are rating it between 7 and 10. They are still in Hilton Head. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're doing different separate activities. At the top of this episode, we've got the women going golfing and the men cooking. Very, you know, switching up the roles, switching up the roles. And the women go golfing, but none of them really know how to golf. Except Sweet Tea. I was actually, like, pleasantly surprised. I was like, look at Sweet Tea showing the girls how, how, how to play the, play the golf. All right? Dr. Heavenly is always dragging Toya. She's like, you know, I, but I, feel, I felt deja vu. Watching Heavenly says, I, I do I do everything better than Toya. I do every I play golf better than Toya and other I was like, I feel like she said this before. And I I'm thinking to myself, she probably has, and she just consistently is always dragging Toya. All right. She's like, I do everything better than Toya. 
<laughs> mm. But Dr. Heavenly actually had a pretty good shot. Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie both went in the water. Uh, Dr. Alicia, she had a pretty good shot as well. I was impressed with Dr. Alicia's shot. Okay. Um, we got a lot to unpack when it comes to Dr. Alicia in this episode and her husband, Kima, Dr. Kima. So, um, Dr. Jackie. So, Dr. Jackie is evil. <laughs> oh, no, I saw another side of Dr. Jackie in this episode. And I know we've been talking about Dr. Jackie and how Dr. Jackie might be the real villain. I don't know if she's the villain, but she is not as sweet and nice as people. I don't think we've ever said that. We were just talking about this a couple of weeks ago. And her her uh, bedside manner is just, ing. it's not great. Like, I would not want her to be my doctor. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have. I think she's definitely a competent. She's probably even a, an excellent doctor, but her, her bedside manner is would turn me off. Some people are okay with that. She has plenty of patients that are okay. I mean, I'm not going to Dr. Jackie. She's an OBGYN. But you get what I'm saying. If I was to go to Dr. Jackie, and she wouldn't be my... I, she, mm, especially the way that she talked to Sweet Tea. I was just sort of like... And look, I'm not saying Sweet Tea was innocent. I don't like the fact that Sweet Tea went to the level of F-U-B. I didn't like that part. But I did want someone to call Dr. Act, Dr. Jackie out for her BS. I say all that to say Dr. Jackie in this moment when she, you know, she's playing golf and she's not very good at it. She's probably not used to not being good at it. But OK, Leo's because someone at the, the D.C. show says, Kempire, you never talk about Leo's. You never talk about us Leo's. And I had to say to her, and, you know, that's a very Leo question. That's a very Leo statement. <laughs> I, why don't you talk about the Leo's? Mind you, I have a Leo mood, so I love a Leo. Why don't you talk about Leos? I say all that to say because Dr. Jackie is a Leo. So she probably is very insecure. You know what I mean? <laughs> so Dr. Jackie says something in this scene when they're playing golf. She's like, I'm too busy out saving the world to be playing with balls. And I'm thinking to myself, and look, she's always shown this side to herself. But after that whole debacle with Dr. Heavenly in the YouTube interview and, and all of that, I'm just like, ew, like, it's just, and we know there, there are certain doctors, maybe a lot of doctors that have this sort of level of superhero, superhuman personalities. However, seeing her, I was just like, Dr. Jackie, like, ew, Ew, she's like, I'm too busy saving the world. And, and you know, we love our doctors over here. We love our nurses over here. We love our healthcare workers. You know, people seem to forget after the pandemic how much people are like, oh, my God, thank God for the... They were, they were, they were paddling their pans and things like that at, at 7 o'clock every day during the pandemic, and all of a sudden people forgot. <laughs> people just forgot about the, the, the healthcare workers. No! Forgive their student loans, please, and thank you. Shout out to all the healthcare workers. And when I say healthcare workers, I'm not just talking about the doctors and the nurses. I'm talking about every single one of y'all that are making sure that the hospital runs smoothly. The administrators, the, the janitors, all of you. All right? The nurses' assistants. Just saying. Anyways. Yes, the guy complex. Fumi, I could not think of the name. She has a God complex, but a lot of doctors do have that as well. So she's not alone, but a lot of those doctors aren't, 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 they aren't on reality television. So we're not seeing it. The Leos are acting up in the chat. Hey, Leos, <laughs> I'm talking about y'all now. I'm talk I, I, honestly, that question, that statement, when she came up to the mic, I was like, that is such a perfect Leo statement. Thank you for being a perfect example of a Leo. She's like, why are you guys talking about a Leos? Well, here we are. And mind you, we do talk about Leos. I always tell you guys I have a Leo moon. Just saying. Anyways. Uh, Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl says that um, Dr. Jackie is really leaving a sour taste in my mouth this season. And I think a lot of people already kind of had already turned their backs on Dr. Jackie after the Buffy situation. But this season, especially in this particular episode, these last couple of episodes, She's just been very nasty. Very nasty. Look, look. 
lawyers have a God complex. Mm, no, they do. Don't get me wrong, because I've worked with thousands. I've met thousands of attorneys over the years, okay? Here's the thing. I don't feel like it's necessarily a God complex. It's not as bad as doctors, to be honest with you. There, there is some sort of complex with lawyers, but the God complex may be on some level, not as much as doctors, all right? Elsa Singleton says, Leos are a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> why are we going to drag Leos today? See, you, madam, you asked for it. You asked us to talk about Leos, and now we're dragging Leos. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mm. Oh, Alicia says, Dr. Jackie ain't saving the damn world. <laughs> damn. Well, on some level, she is. On some level, she really is. I'm not going to take that away from her. But the fact that she says it, ew, look, ew, just saying, just saying. Anyways, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. We're talking about the latest episode of Married to Medicine. If you missed it, we were just live recapping the Real Housewives of Potomac. We had a really great conversation about what's going on over there in regards to Dr. Wendy Acefo and NECA. So be sure to check that out if you missed it. Back to this. So the guys are in a cooking class. I already knew that Dr. Eugene was going to win this. Dr. Eugene, I don't know. I know he has a passion for medicine, but clearly he has a passion for cooking. And I don't know if he plans to ever leave medicine or if there's a way to incorporate both. I don't know. He is so passionate about cooking. So I already knew he was going to win this. But Kima, Dr. Kima, is like, he doesn't believe that this is a manly activity. Are we in the Stone Age? I told you I don't believe Kima when he talks about um about you know he, the things that he talks about in regards to women and women's roles. But I'm like, all right, if you, I don't believe it. it he doesn't come across believable when he when he mentions it. Do I have that picture still here? I don't think. Oh, I do. Hey, Kima. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kima. But every time I see his face, this is what I think of. The the Cheshire, the Cheshire cat. I'm sorry. Every random the random smiles. I just don't believe him. I just don't believe him. But he says this is not a manly activity. I didn't realize cooking, especially in 2024, that cooking was subjugated to um to gender. Just saying. I'm sure you did cooking when when Alicia was away with the group. Dr. Alicia was away with the group. You remember a couple of weeks ago, he looked down on dentists. Because you remember, he's an oral surgeon. There clearly is a, di a difference. However, um, the way he kind of looked down on on dentists, you know, dentists, that's your wife's job. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I believe him. I don't know why I'm giving him grace. I normally believe every other chauvinist. <laughs> just say it. So clearly he was very happy with himself though because the the you know chefs gave him a compliment on the squash that he he made a part of Team Cecil. However, Team Cecil lost. They lost. Clearly. The rice wasn't even finished cooked. Al dente, whatever. <laughs> it wasn't finished cooked. I have to say, Dr. Eugene's meal looked delectable. <laughs> looked delectable. Just saying, it look. I, I want to taste Dr. Eugene's food. He cooks a lot, and usually when they have these group trips, th he's the one cooking. Good for him. Look good for him. I knew he was gonna win, though. I knew he was gonna win. Honestly, I watched this because I, I remember seeing the preview for this episode, and I was like, damn, I feel like I'm watching this scene over and over again. I've seen this these two scenes between both groups for like the last two weeks. Anyways, we're gonna move on. So Eugene, when they get back to the house, he has sweet tea about the little baby comment in regards to what Dr. Jackie said. And he made a, a little joke about it. And she was like, too soon, too soon, too soon. Because you remember Dr. Jackie was like, um, very much like what Monique does. Hey, sweet baby. I love us for real. I love us for real. There was a lot of that at the DC show. <laughs> I love us for real. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so... Toya, Toya's a little instigator. Anyone else notice how she was instigating in this episode? But she was sort of like what we've been saying, though. You know, why are you sorry, um, Sweet Tea? You shouldn't be sorry. She was being condescending to you. But um, she did point out that Dr. Jackie said, you know, apologies are for you. So she doesn't even care about this apology. 
pretty much diminishing an apology before you it's even given. All right. So um, they talk about that. Dr. G just he just wants to fix it. He doesn't want any issues within the group. Look, I feel like Dr. G, when it comes to the rest of the group, he's sort of like the he's lower on the totem pole. I don't think they necessarily respect his opinion or his thoughts. I think he's a part of the group and the group sort of he follows wherever the group goes. So he doesn't want any issues with his wife in the group. So he's like, I, I just want to fix it. I don't want to rehash any of this stuff. Phaedra's still on the show. Did y'all realize that? Sidebar. Okay, we almost forgot to talk about this. So just for those that didn't know, and you may have missed the report, that they're reporting that um, Apollo Nida will be making an appearance at the reunion. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Was this her last stitch effort in order to save her position on the show? And I know people have asked, Toya asked, you know, where's Apollo? Why is Apollo didn't come to the birthday party? I still don't understand. We barely talked about Phaedra's personal life. We barely talked about Apollo. Why would Apollo show up at the reunion? You know Phaedra paid him to show up. You know Phaedra. Someone paid him to show up. Even if Phaedra didn't pay him, someone paid Apollo to show up. Apollo's not showing up to that reunion unless he's getting paid. Please understand. So that report came out that Apollo will be at the Mary to Medicine reunion. But at the same time, I, honestly, I'm only mentioning that because we're recapping Mary to Medicine. However, I don't care. <laughs> I, oh, come on, hold on. I don't care. I don't care that he's at the reunion. Anyone else? I don't. Just saying. Anyways, so Apollo will be at this reunion. Not sure if that's going to do anything for me in regards to Phaedra's storyline. You also may have seen that Phaedra in a recent interview said that it's not off the table that she could return to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, I don't want to see that either. Anything that has to do with Phaedra sharing her personal life because she refuses to do that, I don't want to see it. She has not done that during the reunion. I don't care what Dr. Heavenly says on her recaps. <laughs> I'm sorry. She has not shown it. She has not shown it. She has not proven to me. 13 episodes in, Phaedra is still a non motherfucking factor. <laughs> Just saying. She's. I love her on Traders, though. I am such a hypocrite. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm basing it off of, off, off of the, the premises of the show. Love her on Traders. I don't know if she's going to make it to the end, though. The heat's on her. She made it past this past week, though. We'll talk more about it tomorrow during Tuesday Takeover. That reminds me, I got to rewatch it. And I got to watch Below Deck. And I got to watch 90 Day Fiance. I got a lot of stuff to do. And I got to finish watching Love is Blind. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, too. We got a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow. All right. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not really interested in Phaedra or Apollo at this reunion. What are we going to talk about? Oh, wait. We're going to talk about stuff that we haven't talked about during the season? Really? All right. I mean, I'm going to watch. I, I still love Married to Medicine. I'm going to watch. Apollo just, no, Phaedra is just like, Phaedra, thanks for watching, girl. <laughs> or Phaedra Stan just watch. You know, we can still see the dislikes on my end. <laughs> Who dislikes so far? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> Mr. Melon and Magic says, be careful, Kemp. She's a Scorpio. I was raised by two Scorpios. <laughs> I ain't Scort. <laughs> Look, I ain't Scort. Anyways. Saying all that to say, <laughs> so Phaedra reveals to the group in the car that Kima said that he and Alicia don't get involved in, you know, the oral of it all. Like there's no, no one's going down there on either side, which reminded me of, you remember Evan and Jackie from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Remember she's, I don't know if he does it for her. I don't think he does, but she definitely doesn't do it for him. And everyone's just sort of like, what? Kima and Alicia don't get themselves involved in that? Here's the thing. Everyone likes what they like. I don't think it's impossible. It does make me kind of go, really? <laughs> look, look. Re ne never, ever. But remember, during the confessional a couple of weeks ago, she says you could, you could go down there more. So obviously, obviously, it's something that maybe... Look, maybe... <laughs> 
maybe it's something that she wants and she's just uh, uh, not allowing it because he li she literally says he doesn't want to look down on his queen. Well, he doesn't have to look down. Remember, if you were at the DC show, somebody was flirting in the audience with me and I was like, I, I wouldn't date someone that watches me. <laughs> he, re he proceeded to say, my eyes are closed. <laughs> no. All right. So here's the thing. <laughs> So, Kima, close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. Close your eyes. And, and experience the pleasure. I don't know. Look, I'm never going to judge someone for their own sexual tastes. Just saying. Because even though we can't, look, we can't understand it, there are some people that don't like that. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. But I'm going to judge at my next show. I'm going to talk about it <laughs> during our Philly show. Guys, don't forget, we will be coming to Philly, City Winery, Philly, Philadelphia on March 7th. More information on that is available in the description. Then Boston, we'll be seeing you on May 30th. And then Atlanta, Atlanta. Are you, people are already buying their tickets for Atlanta. I know it's in July, July 12th. Don't wait, though. Don't wait. Meet and greets are also available. More information will be available in the description of this live recap. All right. <laughs> uh, Sierra says uh, he'd be looking up. I just don't understand. I just don't understand um, people that feel that way. But to me, it seems as if Dr. Alicia feels as if she would like it. It sounds like she would like it. All right. Let me see what, what some of you are saying. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This says, Kempire, you know that Nigerian is getting head from somewhere. Here's the thing. I think also as black culture, a lot of, a lot of folks in the community did not want to talk about oral situations. Okay. They don't like to talk about it. I think still people do not like to talk about it, but they still partake in it. And I'm guessing that stems from all the way back to the motherland. <laughs> all the way back to the motherland. All right. Ooh, come on. Y'all are best in the chat. Okay, we can get by after dark right now. Tika says, I dated a Jamaican who didn't go down to the store, but I broke him. I broke him, child. I think people just say that. I think people just say that. Until they start trying it. I don't I don't know. Mm-mm. Uh hold on. Where did Joe Joe? Joe Joe. What did you ask this week, Joe? You asked something else. Oh yeah, you asked an inappropriate question. Um, Joe says, uh, the guy from the DC show did ask Kempire again during the QA, but Kempire shut him down again, or did he? <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Look, Joe. I went to hang out with I went up to hang out with Taria and her husband. We went and got pizza. That, you see, you see, you can see where my heart lies after a show. I was hungry. Shout out to Taria. Taria, we had some good pizza. What was it? Lido's? For the, if you're from, from the DMV area, you know what Lido's is. It was good. <laughs> I mean, it's not New York pizza, but it was good. It was definitely good. All right. Uh La Heathers, hey, says an oral surgeon who doesn't like oral. How dreadful. <laughs> Points have been made. <laughs> Points have been made. Maybe, maybe because he knows the mouth so well. Maybe, maybe it turns him off. Look again. I'm not judging, but I'm judging him here. <laughs> not really. I'm not judging. Could I personally be in a relationship like that? Probably not. And I do believe that Dr. Alicia wants that because she said it in her confessional. So if that's something that you want, you're not getting. That's not great. Mackenzie, thank you so much for the super sticker. We appreciate the support. Guys, you can also support the channel just by liking the video, just by sharing the video. If you're listening to this, you can support just by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. All right? <laughs> Someone says, spoken like a true tourist. Damn, I'm hungry now. I'm salivating. <laughs> Mama Ali says, now I want pizza. See? And now I don't want more any more pizza because I just had some on when uh, not Wednesday. Friday night? Yeah, Friday night. That's when the show was. That feels, feels so long ago, but I love pizza. Love pizza. Anyways, enough of the food talk. We're talking about Married to Medicine. All right. Um, so the group 
go out to this 80 foot yacht. Let me just say this, but I've said this about below deck. So please understand. I'm not judging, judging. No, I, I am judging. I'm just judging consistently. I don't really love the yachts on below deck. They feel dated and old. Some, some are better than others. This season's um, yacht. I can't recall. I don't remember, You know, it's it, the new season just started. I, I'm not that impressed, but I get it why we're probably getting these particular yachts because they're probably older and more willing to film on these. When I went to Greece, we went to a marina where all the big fancy yachts are parked. I was like, now that's a yacht. So this yacht for me, even this yacht in comparison to the ones we see on below deck felt like, ugh. Like, ugh. I'm sorry, but it was an 80 foot yacht. Good for them. So the group goes. Simone's feel very good about herself. You may have noticed, and I know some of you probably think the reason why they're flashing back so much this season is because they don't have the content. No, we're celebrating 10 years of Married to Medicine. So they're intentionally flashing back to some of the best memories of the last 10, 10 years, 10 seasons. So um, that's part of the reason why they flash back to Dr. Simone and all the antics that she's had on boats over the years. Okay. Uh, uh, so Dr. Alicia and Jackie discuss her fight with Sweet Tea. So Jackie says that she, um, she might owe an apology uh, to Sweet Tea for not getting up and slapping her in the mouth. Oh, damn. <laughs> We saw a very dark side of Dr. Jackie in this episode. I was just like, uh, getting up and slapping her in the mouth? So Toy is on the other side talking with Sweet Tea, instigating, like, why should you apologize? I mean, the way she spoke to you, I understand why you, you said F. She didn't say it like this, but read between the lines of what Toy was doing. Toy was literally thinking like we're thinking, like, we, we were, I mean, some of us were happy with Sweet Tea coming up against Dr. Jackie. I did not love that she said F-U-B. I think you can still get your point across and be direct and be confrontational without saying F-U-B. But sometimes I guess some people, that's where they go. That's where they go. Tiff says that was nasty AF. Jamaki says she was playing. I, don't, I, I think, yes, she was playing. Because she would never do that. But I also believe that she meant that. <laughs> I believe Dr. Jackie meant that. Just saying. April says Dr. Jackie is human. Yeah, a terrible human. <laughs> <laughs> Jay says that, um, Jay Watt says that Jackie said that for the camera. Yeah, we know she's not gonna, she's not about that life. She's talking big talk. But I still felt that it was nasty. Uh, uh, wait, did I say sweet and low or did I say sweet tea? Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, Elsie says, go to Monaco. The yachts are unbelievable. I can imagine. I was in Greece and I saw some amazing yachts. I was like, this is going. I have pictures. I'm going to post them on Instagram later. Follow me on Instagram. I'm going to post you some of the, the yachts that I saw over in Greece. I was like, wow. Uh, goals. You know what I mean? Ulet says, uh, Jackie's a clown. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Deborah says, Dr. Jackie is just old. Sweet Tea would have beat her. <laughs> come on. Come on. I mean, do you guys believe that Dr. Jackie really forgave Sweet Tea? I don't think she did. I think for the moment, for the camera, I think she did. I don't believe that she really, truly has forgiven Sweet Tea. Uh, Candace says that Dr. Jackie is passive aggressive. I mean, with that, with that, uh, I should have slapped her in the mouth. I was like, okay, is that what we're doing? So Toy is on the other side instigating. So it's like, why did you feel like you had to apologize? But then she encourages her, yeah, go have a conversation with, with Jackie. So Sweet Tea goes over, seeming very confident when she goes over. But as soon as she sits down, it's like she resorts to a little girl. And she's just like, you know, I, I, I'm emotional. I love the fact she didn't allow Dr. Jackie to stop her from being emotional. Because Dr. Jackie is not an emotional person. But we get it. It's her her field. It's her personality. So Dr. Jackie, like, oh, don't cry. And she was just like, I, I get emotional. I get emotional. I was like, all right, we see. I appreciate that about her. Because that happened also during their fight the night before. Just saying. All right, let's take a sip. Sidebar. You know, some of the, the Rus Russian oligarchs, they will come park their big, beautiful yachts 
right in front of the Statue of Liberty. I haven't seen it in, in a few years. But I remember when I used to work downtown in a financial district, you could see from the window um, the um, the Statue of Liberty. And then there'd be like a random yacht <laughs> parked right there because they didn't want to pay the fees that you got to pay when you get when you dock it. And I guess there's some sort of law where you can do that. So a yacht would be parked there for weeks and weeks and weeks. Russian oligarch. Allegedly. <laughs> Look, allegedly. Uh, Chef Lorraine, I see your super chat now. I don't know why I missed your one from Real Housewives of Potomac. I apologize, but thank you so much for the support. Uh, Chef Lorraine says, Kempire, I don't know where the other super chat went earlier. <laughs> it's okay, but I see it now. Thank you so much for the support. We appreciate it. You help and keep the lights on. You help and keep the lights on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, yes, Candace says that Dr. Jackie's body language was very closed. She's not warm at all in body language and body temperature. <laughs> We will get back to Dr. Jackie, but Dr. Jackie does seem receptive to to Sweet Tea in this moment. She does seem receptive to her. And after, you know, Sweet Tea apologizes, a Dr. Jackie also says that, you know, she wants to free. Here goes that sort of God complex. Just listen to her words. She's like, I, I free you, Sweet Tea, of what was said. And I hope that you will free me of that as well, of what I've said. I was like, what in the <laughs> old Negro spiritual? <laughs> I was like, all right, all right, all right. Okay, Dr. Jackie. It, honestly, when I saw the clip of their conversation, I got a little warm in my heart. But this was before I saw some of the things that Dr. Jackie said earlier in the episode. I had just saw the clip when they were promoting this episode this week. I was like, oh, I'm so glad that they were able to get along. You know what I mean? Nope. Nope. After watching it, it feels a little different. Anyone else? After watching everything up until this point, I'm like, I don't know if Dr. Jackie is really open to this apology or she's just doing it to do it. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But based off her her digs towards Sweet Tea later on when they go for their little slumber party, Dr. Jackie, well, the rest of the group said it too when when Sweet Tea apologized to her in the car. They're like, oh, Dr. Jackie is done with her. Done with her. Maybe not, because look at Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly. They didn't start off great, and now they're best of friends. Maybe. All right. Kima. So they're on the boat. They're having, uh, they're about to have dinner, and Kima's like, he's got Alicia well-trained. Dr. Jackie stops in. <laughs> Dr. Jackie's like, <laughs> well-trained dogs are trained, not not um, women. All right. Which leads to the women going inside, preparing plates for their men because Alicia was already going to do that. She goes out, she kisses Kima and she's like, here you go, baby. And look, I, I'm, I've never been in her, a heterosexual relationship. I don't believe in any of those roles anyway. But how do you guys feel about those things? Because, you know, Dr. Heavenly loves to talk about, you know, being submissive to your man and, and the reason why so many women are single and they don't have their men is because they're not willing to be submissive. You see all these people with think pieces. Kevin Samuels, I mean, before he passed on, he had a lot of things to say about women and, and whatnot. And there are plenty of other people and stuff like that that have their, you know, YouTube channels or social media platforms that believe this is why you're single. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know if I believe any of that. I believe your relationship, your rules. So I'm not going to judge Dr. Kima and Dr. Alicia for rules that they have agreed work for their, their relationship. Unless it's not working for one of them, which I believe is not necessarily wor working 100% for Dr. Alicia. But Kima's sitting there, you know, with, you know, with his Cheshire smile. Like, mm, mm, with his Cheshire cat smile. You know, he... <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got my woman well-trained. Well-trained. Okay, sir. <laughs> Look, sir. Pink, uh, Pretty Pink Survivor says Heavenly's plate was sloppy. I thought I was the only one that noticed that. When she came out, food was dropping off the plate, but it was full. It was full. So the ladies have a little bit of a competition, and Dr. Jackie only participates because everyone else is participating. And they all bring out their husband's food. Toya brings out his food, uh, her husband's food. She's not well-trained, but she, she she wanted to be a part, all right? 
All right, so they fix it. their husbands a plate. Dr. Jackson eventually comes out and brings a plate for, for Curtis. Did you guys see when they kiss? I was like, hmm. There's more happening with this relationship with... And look, we also understand after being with, with someone for a long time, relationships aren't as, you know, sexy or romantic. I mean, hopefully it will be, but not all relationships are, all right? Which has led to rumors about them them having an open relationship. And, you know, we've talked about Curtis being in DR and what's he doing over in DR. My thing is that if Curtis cheated on Dr. Jackie recently, it's not something that happened 20 years ago. He recently cheated on her. And we find out in this episode that he's still not getting sex with her a lot. And she says because she's tired. But she'd rather get on social media to unwind. Mind you, on Watch What Happens Live, she had no qualms about saying, yeah, that's still the same. I'm not changing that in regards to her social media use. And she says, you know, some of it's for work. Girl, if you don't validate, look, if you don't, um, not validate, but prioritize your husband of how many years? I mean, she, if she hasn't done it before, she's not going to start now. And I already told you guys, the minute I'm in a relationship, you will know because I'm going to prioritize that relationship over work because Dr. Jackie's not hurting for money. And hopefully I won't be hurting for money either, but I'm still going to prioritize my person over work because at the end of the day, none of y'all going to keep me warm at night, even if you want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? None of y'all going to keep me warm at night. So I need to... um warm up myself with, with my boo thank you justin for becoming a, a, a senior royal of the uh kempire youtube channel membership guys if you would like to become a member of the channel head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join but we'll get back to that so the ladies are eating inside I, again i'm when phaedra shows up phaedra's getting her own plate because she doesn't have a man there that she wants to share with the cameras so Phaedra's fixing her own plate, and she's just like, oh, yes, I don't, I'm so glad I don't have to, you know, fix a plate for no man. Mm, 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 mm. Can't see your eyes or nothing. <sighs> so the men are talking about, you know, Kima and his, his thoughts on men's roles. I really don't believe Kima at all. I don't know why I don't believe him. I don't know. I think his energy, I think his energy just does not give me like that you really believe half the crap that's coming out of your mouth. I don't believe it. Maybe I will believe it at some point. <laughs> I, I still don't believe it. And I get it. Part of Nigerian culture, it might be something the way that he grew up. But I just, half the time, I, his face is telling me otherwise. His face is not telling me that he believes half the crap that's coming out of his mouth. Anyone else? All right. <laughs> Phaedra. Oh, Lord. Anyways. Anyways, anyways, anyways. What else did I want to say about, about this scene? Oh, so Toya sends the poor yacht crew member out to, to ask the men if they needed anything else. And, of course, Eugene, Dr. Eugene tells, tells him to tell her, oh, she didn't give me a kiss when, when, she, when she came out here. And he's like, oh, tell him I'll give him a kiss later in private on his private. And Heavenly, you are, I mean, I appreciated it, though, because it was funny. It was funny for us because we needed that little light moment from the confessional. Dr. Heavenly's like, I don't want to think about him and his little private. She didn't want to say little because you remember what they flashed back. They flashed back to what Toya said about Eugene's member. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. so Dr. Heavenly does not want to think about that at all. All right. So then Alicia, Dr. Alicia and Toya get into it. Dr. Alicia and Toya get into it about the whole well-trained comment. Because Toya's like, you OK with him saying that you're well-trained? And she's like, he was just joking. Was he, though? Because he's out there telling the guys he's he's taught you when I come home, I want dinner. When I come home, I want dinner. Like he's telling the guys that he has trained you. Well, here's the thing. We train each other in, in, in every relationship. You teach people how to treat you. But the way that he's making it seem, like Dr. Jackie said, is like he trained a dog. So there's different. There, there is a difference. All right? So Toya and Dr. Alicia get into it, which I'm here for, because it shows you that, that uh, Dr. Alicia is no sucker. And we have already said, I think there is... 
Dr. Alicia is one extreme and Toy is another extreme. I think Toy could learn a thing or two in, in regards to how she speaks to Dr. Eugene. Hashtag save Dr. Eugene. <laughs> but I also think that Dr. Eugene likes it. He has some sort of, you know, kink about, about the way that Toy treats him. But I also told you that wait and w watch and wait, wait and watch <laughs> when, when her boys end up getting their girlfriends and wives, one of them is going to deal with, or two, both of them will deal with someone very much like Toya, and she's going to look at her behavior a little bit differently. A little bit differently. But again, these are their rules. Dr. Alicia and Kima have their rules that work for them, and Dr. Eugene and Toya have rules that work for them. That work, It works for them. I'm not going to be, it's not my relationship. I would never sit there and be like, oh, that's what you like? You like it? I love it. I'm not... It's not my relationship. And when you involve yourself in people's relationship, they end up turning on you because they're not going to leave their husband <laughs> because of what you think. Just saying. Let me say thank you because we got a couple of super chats. Um, damn, it's not like uh, Nicki Minaj. Uh, SD Mac, thank you so much for the super chat. SD says, still don't see what Dr. Jackie has done on the show to make her a horrible person. She hasn't hired... Uh, P.I. to dig up dirt on people, hasn't accused people of stealing, cheating on spouses, hit anyone, stuck up, doesn't equal horrible. In your book, look, in your book, t talking about how you should have slapped somebody in the face, that's not horrible? She's done a couple of things that, that I can... Oh, wait, Buffy of other... You didn't think that was horrible? You didn't think that was horrible? Especially because Dr. Jackie revealed something that wasn't told to her by Buffy... It was told to her through Simone and she decided to get on a stage and call a woman infertile. And you are an OBGYN. That's not horrible. <laughs> and I know that happened a few seasons ago, but even her apology wasn't great. Wasn't a great apology. Sorry, SD Mac. I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> SD says, uh, Toy and Eugene are two of the most shadiest on this cast. Uh Oh, Quad, is that you? <laughs> Quad. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Quad. Um, Toy is stirring the pot with sweet tea. I did say that, though. I still believe Toy cheated on Eugene, and, and he lost that weight because of it. <gasps> Toya, is that you? <laughs> uh, Toya, is that you? Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, things, everything. Toya. Quad, is that you? Quad, is that you? Just asking. You don't have to tell us. Quad is coming back next week for the season finale. Next week's the season finale of Married to Medicine. Just saying. Anyways. I mean, you, you don't have to agree with me when it comes to Dr. Jackie and her being a horrible person, but I will never forget what she did to Buffy. And the fact that you guys keep telling Buffy to get over it, you wouldn't tell that to someone else that's had miscarriages. Would you? Just saying. Just asking. <laughs> Maybe you would. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> mm -mm. So Alicia and, and Toya get into it and talk about the whole well-trained comment. And Alicia says um, that she feels like men should temper their wives. She also believes that Toya could be uh, need some training from Eugene. Some of you might agree with her. Some of you might agree with her. I could see where Toya could learn a thing or two. <laughs> a thing or two, not a hundred percent, not a hundred percent. So they take a picture in front of the 80 foot yacht and then they head back. They head back for a group slumber party because this is where they're going to ask those uncomfortable questions that I would never answer in front of mixed company. Even if I've known these people for 10 years, I'm not answering these marriage questions in front of these, in this group of people. These questions were so invasive. I'm like, no. But again, this is why they sign up for reality television. They're willing to do that. I just couldn't. I feel, I feel like we learned way too much about their situation. But now here we go. We, we, we learned too much, and now we're going to, to unpack it and judge it. <laughs> now we're going to unpack it and judge it. Okay. Oh, yes. Miss Big Miss Muffin, she said that um, Toya needs like, one of those shock collars. <laughs> And she's like, oh, well, I do have something, but you put it in your panties. I mean, look, whatever works for you, works for you. All right? Oh, <laughs> SD, thank you, SD. 
SD says, love you, Kim Fire, my fellow Brooklyn Knight. No, it's not Quad. <laughs> I know it's not Quad. You've been here a long time, SD. Thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate your support. Guys, you can also support the channel just by liking the video, sharing the video. And if you're listening to this, you can support just by giving us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. I did post a new episode earlier today, a little mix of what I reported on here on YouTube in regards to the Portia and Simon situation from Real Housewives of Atlanta. But I was also giving you an update and some more thoughts that I had. We'll talk more about that during our Tuesday Takeover as well tomorrow where we talk about a variety of reality tv reality tv news but also pop culture news dc we had a good mix on uh, dc i like i said you just never know what i'm going to talk about sometimes uh, up until the last minute i'm t thinking about what i want to talk about during the show we had a mix at this show we barely t i thought we were going to talk a lot about potomac we barely talked about potomac we um we talked a little bit about love and marriage dc we talked more about pop culture we talked about valentine's day we talked about uh sex and all kinds of stuff we had short and shady comments all of it shout out to dc we appreciate you guys we already talking about coming back to dc so stay tuned for that we'll probably come back in the warmer months or you know fall or something so stay tuned for that all right all right um jessica says i uh, uh do you agree that dr jackie is the real villain <sighs> Look, I believe all of them have played a villain. I think Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone are uh, have been sort of painted with the I idea that they're they're very innocent when they're not. Uh, for and I'm sure that's intentional. I'm sure that's intentional because they're supposed to be like the doctors of this show. They're supposed to be like the oh, you know what I mean? I feel like the the god complex is also given to them as well. All right. Oh, <laughs> Danny says, well, there's nothing to talk about Potomac. Yeah, but when I after I finished the show, I was like, well, we didn't really talk a lot about Potomac. But everyone seemed to walk away okay with that. But I was like, well, there's things we could have talked about. But, I, I, you know, I was reading the energy of the, the audience. <laughs> we shall see. We, we shall see. All right, Philly, what we're going to talk about? I guess we won't know until March 7th, right? Boston, what are we going to talk about? I guess we won't know until May 30th. Atlanta, what are we going to talk about? The Atlanta reboot. Uh, but, and more, and more. God only knows what will happen between now and uh, July 12th, Atlanta. Stay tuned. More information on all those dates will be available in the description. French lady says, Jackie is a fraud. Damn. <laughs> Damn. I don't know. I don't know if she, I don't know. Fraud is a big statement, especially after reporting on Simon Gobadia. Just saying, like, I don't know if she's a fraud on that level. You know what I mean? So I don't want to call her a fraud. Anyways, so speaking of Dr. Jackie, she takes a, a dig at Sweet Tea when she walks in and she sees, I thought this was a cute setup with the little teepees and, you know, the pillows and all the little, you know, it was cute. It was a very nice setup that Dr. Simone had for the group so that they can do a little pillow talk, okay? So Dr. Jackie takes a dig at Sweet Tea. She says a party set up for, for the youth. I was like, oh, God, here we go. I thought they were good. I thought they were good. But again, when you get into that confessional, you don't you never know how these things are chopped and screwed and, and who, who, you know, they pull out of you, you know, to say certain things about people. So who knows? Who knows? So they play this game. And one of the first questions that, that is asked is what is you know, what are some major issues for you in your marriage? And I was like, y'all just want to just have a fight. <laughs> So Jackie brings up the fact that she's always on social media and Curtis hates that. And she says some of it's because she's, you know, it's, it's work, but also that's one of the ways that she keeps up with what's going on in the world. I'm like, okay, you can also listen to the news on your way home. Like one of the issues that you had in your marriage was the fact that you weren't spending more time with your husband. That was part of the reason why you were supposed to be leaving work early and that's why you hired more doctors. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand. And then on Watch What Happens Live, it, it didn't seem like she was willing to make a change or a compromise. You know what I mean? It didn't seem like she was making a, a you know, a compromise. Shay Babe says, uh, it's a joke. In regards to what she said about Sweet Tea. Yeah, but they're all making they're all making the same joke about Sweet Tea and her age. I know Sweet Tea has also made some comments about their age. So I guess it's fair. All's fair in love and war. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for the super chat. Joe says, I'll I'll get ticks for Marlo and Yovana for the Atlanta show. Why? <laughs> Look, why? 
<laughs> Reiki with Jan Janaki. Thank you so much for the super chat. Can't wait till you come back. Oh, hold on. Where is it? Come on. Comment. There we go. Can't wait Wait until you come back. Uh, your energy was fire. Thank you so much, Reiki with Janaki. Appreciate the support. You know, I love Reiki too. We talked a little bit about that when I met um, Janaki. <laughs> guys if you haven't already be sure to like the video we are talking about the latest episode of married to medicine uh d says she truly doesn't like him then why are she, why are they still together is that why she allows for him to go to the dr <laughs> we we're just talking about potomac being the dr and what goes down in the dr all right all right april says social media is also a part of her job now yeah, but if your husband is telling you that he would like for you to be less on social media, you're barely home, and you've already been in a situation where he stepped out, you think that you would prioritize your husband. And look, Dr. Jackie's not hurting for coins, y'all. <laughs> Please understand, she's not hurting for coins. So some of that of that she's taking on, she doesn't need to take on. You think Dr. Jackie needs to be an influencer on social media right now between her job over at Bravo and her own practice? She doesn't need it. Oh, Big Miss Muffin says it's probably cheaper to keep them. Oh, damn. <laughs> Look, damn. Well, then maybe she does need the, the social media jobs. Damn. Anyways. <sighs> Look, I don't know if I believe that. I think we need to you know, um, normalize, take half of it. I don't care. <laughs> I much rather my peace. I much just rather my peace. Sierra says he's in DR for real estate. Sure. 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 All right. So she brings that up. <clears throat> Alicia and Kima talk about their finances and how Alicia apparently is a little bit irresponsible when it comes to finances and Kima is a little bit more responsible. So she talks about how he's invested a lot of their money in stocks and crypto. And when they made a profit, she was like, you should take it out and we should, you know, do other things with it. And he didn't. And then they lost that money in crypto. So um, then he, he make Kima makes a converse, He makes a statement that she'll spend like one hundred fifty thousand dollars and we don't know where it went. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. So if you follow me on Twitter, I said. Well, I think I know where that money went. I think that Dr. Alicia has an FU fund because there's a lot of red flags when it comes to Kima. <laughs> okay? So I believe she that $150,000, because remember the way she grew up. That's why I don't know if I 100% believe that she is this submissive wife. I think in some, in some ways that she is. But remember, she grew up with a single mom that told her don't always rely on a man. <laughs> so I believe Dr. Alicia's got her FU fun. God forbid he acts a fool and she's got $150,000 hidden somewhere. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. <clears throat> I hope, I hope for her sake. She put that money somewhere in a separate account. Please and thank you. I don't think Dr. Alicia's stupid. I think she likes to play like she doesn't know her finances. And maybe she does like a nice bag or something. Fine. But I also don't think she's dumb. She might also got some... She's also real in real estate. She's probably also got an FU uh, a home. God forbid he acts up. She's got a, another home somewhere where she can stay. Smart. <laughs> I approve this message. I approve this message. Shout out to Dr. Alicia. <laughs> I don't think she that that hundred fifty thousand dollars is missing anywhere, because for him to say that they don't know where it went, to spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars, she had to buy something material. It wasn't spent on food, okay. Even if it was spent on a trip, there would be tracking for that trip, right? One hundred fifty thousand dollars, that could be a car, that could be jewelry, that could be bags. All that's material. So you're telling me you don't know how she spent one hundred fifty thousand? Yeah, we don't. She doesn't know how she spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Doctor Alicia, she she doesn't know. Wink, wink. How she spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars? I I'm not gonna say. Let me stop saying it <clears throat> because I don't want him to start go looking for it. 
never mind, Dr. Alicia. You, you spent that money and it's gone. Gone, gone, gone. All gone. She spent the money all gone in that separate property that she has. Gone. Gone. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Anyways, so I hate when Dr. Simone and Cecil are chiming in when it comes to people's relationships. I hate the fact that they sort of lead the conversations when it comes to relationships. I don't know. Maybe because I just don't take advice from like my friends when it comes to relationships like that. Like I, I'm. That's also a tourist thing. I'm not going to 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 anybody to talk about my relation stuff. I'll go to my my therapist. <laughs> I'm not going to one of them, and I especially don't want to sit here and listen to Doctor Simone talk about relationships and giving me advice on relationships. Yes, she's been in a relationship a long time. Wah 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 wah. Whatever. But you also can't talk about Cecil's um best friend. Y'all had to stop writing the book because of that situation. So I'm not taking advice from y'all. Peace. Look, <laughs> sorry. SD, thank you so much for another super chat. We appreciate your support. SD says, I think Jackie and Simone are a lot like, hold on, are a lot like um, of married people. How many times does Curtis and Cecil turn on the game or go golfing when wives want time with them? Point, point. How many times is, is Curtis going to DR when she wants to spend time with him? Just saying. But maybe that's why it's going to the DR. She's like, well, if you're going to cheat, go cheat in DR, allegedly. Where no one will no one will find you. That's what he thinks. <laughs> Look, that's what he thinks. I mean, I hope not. Just saying. Ooh. Paula Vere says, Paula Vere girl says, Dr. Alicia is lulling this Nigerian into thinking she's submissive. I like her. Uh, she shut Toya up. I like her too. She's growing on me. Dr. Alicia, anyone else? Dr. Alicia's growing it because I don't think Dr. Alicia is as submissive or dumb like she wants people to believe. Not to say that she wants people to believe she's dumb, but yeah, I don't believe. I don't believe it. That hundred fifty thousand dollars. Lola, wink, wink, <laughs> wink, wink. All right, Dr. Alicia, let me stop talking about it because I don't want him to start go looking. Okay. Anyways, so Jack and Curtis also talk about how they're not having enough sex. Jackie says, because I'm tired. I'm tired. Toya says, well, have you gotten the O shot? She's like, I got the OMP. Da, da, da. I'm like, all right. She's like, I'm tired. Again, we have to remember, it. Dr. Jackie looks young, but Dr. Jackie's also a, a woman of a particular age. I have to keep that in mind. But at the same time, I'm like, you're not. <laughs> look, look, look. I can't even, um, can't, can't get the DR of it all out of my mind. Because she, she's tired, but someone else isn't <laughs> in the DR. Just saying. <laughs> Somebody is not. Those younger girls in the DR, younger women in the DR, they're not so tired. If you're not going to give it to your man, he's going to get it from somewhere. Especially the man that cheated on you in the not so long, long ago past. I'm not wishing that on Dr. Jackie, but I'm just saying, like, the, the red flags are slapping us all in the face. Anyways. Um, so, apparently, they're not having sex. Eugene and Toya's sex life has gotten better because their communication has gotten better. Also, Dr. Eugene has lost some weight. They do say your sex drive goes up when you lose weight. So, he says that their sex life has been better. Toya says, I just, Toya, you always take a dig. Anytime you're having a good moment, she will always take a dig. She's like, I just wish it wasn't planned. So Eugene's like, well, so if I wake you up in the middle of the night, would you be down for that? She was like, yeah. As long as I'm able to go back to sleep. He's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, God. Always taking a dig. Always taking a dig at this man. You, just when you're, you're celebrating, yes, we're communicating better. Everything's working out for the best. Yay. Only for her to be like, um, I just wish it wasn't planned. She's just never happy. <laughs> Hashtag save Dr. Eugene. Hashtag surviving Toya. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag surviving Toya. All right. All right, y'all. We're going to drop the call in link for our community. Uh, first members will get access. And, uh, I'm just going to drop it for all members at the same time. We're going to drop it for all members at the same time on the community tab here on YouTube. Those of you that are listening on the podcast, we won't be including the callers for this live, but 
We did, we, we will be including the callers for today's recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac because we had a lot of really great callers weighing in on some of the voodoo, Nigerian culture stuff. So I feel like it's important to, to share that. All right. All right. So if you remember the channel, I'm we're dropping the call in link for members there. Live chat, we have almost a thousand of you here for our real health, not real health, so as our married to medicine recap. Let's get to 400 likes and I'll drop the call in link for you guys as well. Uh, exactly. Lucy, I couldn't remember what exactly was said, but Lucy reminds me of what they said, both Dr. Eugene and Toya said during their confessional. Eugene said, You better wait, you better wake up when he was asking for sex. And she says, she said, you better put me to sleep. Oh, Lord. I thought that was funny, though. I thought that was funny. Good for them. Good for them. Mazel. <laughs> look, look, mazel. Anyways, <clears throat> what else did I want to say? Oh, so they showed the preview for next week's finale. Next week's the finale of Married to Medicine, which is fine. All right. Quad is going to make an appearance. Dr. G acts very weird ar around Quad. I mean, more weird than usual. Um, then we also see that um, Toya and Dr. Heavenly are going at it. Dr. Heavenly calls out Toya for not donating to the charity. Oh, God. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what this looks like. <laughs> I'm just going to have to wait and see what this looks like. A mess. A mess. All right. Anyways, was there anything else I want to say about this episode? I thought it was a cute episode. If I had to rate this episode, I'd definitely probably give it like, mm, give it seven and a half, eight, maybe like an eight. I thought it was interesting. Jordan, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. We appreciate your support. All right. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitter. Tw no, not Twitter. On Facebook, on Twitch. And for those watching on YouTube, of course, we appreciate your support. Keep liking the video, guys, if you haven't already. We're going to switch this out and get into our callers because I know the callers have plenty to say. Plenty to say. Let me put some snow on. We haven't put any snow on, and it's winter here in New York. Feels like winter in New York. All right. Let's put this up. All right. Let's get some, some callers. Alex is number one again. Number one again. He's he has a lot to say about this situation. Alex, your thoughts and opinions. Hi, hold on. Can you give me one second? My um AirPods aren't connecting and it's having a problem. Can okay. you just drop me off and sure. I'll come up after? Sure. Okay, thanks. All right. We're gonna bring up Wendy next. What's going on, Wendy? What are your thoughts? Look, you okay. and you and Alex fighting for number one position. I know, right? <laughs> okay. So the issue with Alicia and um, Toya, mm. I am behind Alicia 100% mm. because here's my thing. I don't talk about how you should treat your husband in a marriage. You shouldn't do that mm. because my grandmother always told me to, um, if, if I ever got married, one, what's between me and my husband is between me and my husband. Do not put anybody else in your marriage. Yeah. And so it seems like Toria is trying to put a wedge between or cause some kind of conflict mm. into her marriage. So if there was a problem, Alicia and um, whatever, uh, Smiling Chester, wherever you call him, uh, <laughs> um, they probably have talked about it outside and not you know, against one another, which caused them to have a united front. That's mm -hmm. how a marriage should be. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody telling you, you should do this with your marriage, you shouldn't let him train, train you. That's wrong. That's wrong. No, no, just stay united. And if you got a problem, keep it behind the doors. That's all I said. And and I'm so glad she told um Tori that she needs to be trained. And this is the first time I went over my time. I know you had a lot to say today. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that kind of made me mad. It pissed me off. Maybe because I was married. So mm. and uh, just seeing that just pissed me off. So <laughs> that's all. All right. Bye. Thank you, Wendy. Take care. <laughs> yeah, Miss Wendy never gets the timer on her. Let's just try Alex again. Alex, are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. I think it's working. Okay. Okay. So before I start, I have some tea that I want to actually spill out and I actually want to say it correctly. Is about, it related um, to Married to Medicine? Mm, it's about Atlanta, um, which Married to Medicine is. In oh, it's based on, okay. Um, yeah. So it's about um, Simon Goldbody. Yeah. Oh. You know, yeah. So I have a friend and this friend that now lives in Jacksonville used to live in Atlanta and is close friends with Mariah Huck, which is Married to Medicine related. Mm. Now, her cousin is a chief in Nigeria. Yes. Okay. 
So Simon Gobadia was incredibly broke, broke as a joke. But once he and Fallon got on Atlanta, he used that as an opportunity for investors to invest in him. And that's when he started getting his wealth. He mm. was broke as broke could be before it. He's an opportunist. Mm. That's what I have to say. And I feel like this story proves my point. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll continue with Married to Medicine. Sidebar, though, Dr. does Jackie, that mean him yes. coming back with Portia is a way to make him even more money? I don't know. It sounds like he tries to use every opportunity he can. Op every opportunity he can. How it was explained to me was that in Nigeria, that housewives shows are looked at as very prestigious. Whereas here, we kind of look at them as maybe like some of the people on there, the money is very funny. Sorry. How it was explained is that it's very prestigious there, so you get a good light if you're on one of those kind of shows. Really? So that's why investors started investing in him, because he, no one would invest in him. He was washed up. He was dried out. Nobody was going to invest in him after he came back to Nigeria, most likely after being de or deported okay. and then trying to get back to the U.S. Anyways, <clears throat> okay, I'll allegedly. continue with Married to Medicine. Look, allegedly. Alleg yes, All allegedly, of what the callers are saying alleged. are allegedly. All right, go ahead. No, I don't know if someone that's on the verge of being deported can sue me, but please don't. You know, um, goodbye. All right, go see. ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Jackie, you are awful. I cannot stand you. You are so condescending in everything you say and do with that poor girl. She's only in her 30s. I don't know why they're calling her a baby. You're making yourself sound extremely old, which nothing is wrong with being old, but you're making yourself sound like that by calling her a baby, this woman is in her thirties. She is grown. This is a grown woman that you're being condescending to. How are you gonna try to control her emotions? I love how Sweet Tea said, no, this is who I am. I am emotional. You can't control me. That's wrong. And speaking about controlling, um, Cheshire Cat, Dr. Cheshire Cat, sir, you are the most annoying husband I have ever seen on Married to Medicine other than Darren Noggles. You are incredibly annoying, sir. Please get off my screen. And Alicia looking, sitting there looking like she was nothing was behind the eyes while he was talking about that $150,000. We know where that went, girl. We know where that went, girl. And it's good for you. Good for you, girl. All right. I don't think I'll just leave it there okay. because I spent my time talking about Simon Gobadia. Uh-huh. Anyway, have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Mind you, the timing didn't start until you started talking about merits of medicine. So you had extra minutes, <laughs> Alex. All right, Dewan, we're going to bring you up next. Dewan, what's going on? What are your thoughts on merits of medicine? Hey, I can't believe this was season 10 and it was absolutely terrible. I mean, the finale is next week. I'm like, wow, this sucked. Oof. Um, you know, and, and a part of it, I think, is because Quad wasn't there. Uh, because, you know, it was... Everything was like, oh, yeah, this season's going to be crazy because, you know, Quad is there with Greg and the wife. And it's like that lasted for two episodes. Mm -hmm. And after that, I don't know what I was watching. Um, it, I still think it's kind of feel good. Like I, I just watched it um, after you got off your last live. And the whole like tent scene um, was I, I thought that was really good. You know, back to the basics of the show, you know, them talking about their marriages and all of that stuff and work. But. In regards to just other outside entertainment, I was like, geez, they might need to go out and find some other doctors. <laughs> you know, my, 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 my opinion is that the part-time doctor, Simone Whitmore, who does nothing, needs to be gone. She needs to be gone. I'm sorry. Like, her best days are behind her. And Jackie, too. But, yeah, that's just my thoughts. Okay. See you. Be safe. You, too. Thanks. <laughs> Damn. Dewan did not hold back. All right. All right, live chat. Once we get to 400 likes, we'll drop the call in link for you guys to call in and share your thoughts. But right now, we're taking callers from our members of the channel. Mem members, thank you so much for supporting us here. We're going to bring up Joe next. Hold on. What's going on, Joe? Not much. Uh, eliminated, because um, at least we now know that you wouldn't want to have a partner who doesn't, who isn't into a particular activity. At least <laughs> we now know one of your non negotiables, right? Um. Anyways, uh, I, I, I did see the training scene last night with, you know, what Kima was saying. That terminology in general is weird to me, especially referring to an adult. Like, and, and, and I don't know if Kima and Alicia are Christians or all of that, but ask the angel that I am, as you guys know. I'm um, a God-fearing citizen that I am. Um, I, I do remember there's a, there's a verse in Proverbs talking about training a child in a way it should go, but it's about the child. 
But the only thing that I remember in the Bible is in Ephesians talking about wives submitting to their husbands. But it really means like honoring the husbands, not necessarily being like a trained dog or puppy. So maybe they're just extending their interpretation of that if they're into Christianity or reading the Bible or whatnot. But mm. to me, that is still freaking weird. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Joe. No problem. All right. Let me stop the timer. All right. We're going to bring up O'Shea. O'Shea, what time is it in South Africa? <laughs> it is quarter to 2 a.m. Mm. Oh. At the moment. <laughs> we appreciate moment. you staying up, though. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first, I wanted to say I really like your suit for your show the other night. Thank you. And okay, not that you asked, but I think you should do a block color, a new block color for each of your shows. Oh. And then in December, wrap it up on Instagram with a nice reel. Um, very sad comment. <laughs> very sad comment. I just want to say something about Alicia and the 150K. I do believe it's for a house. And I know Tyler Perry talks a lot of nonsense, but one thing that he does say, and I think it's very true, if you're a woman and you marry, the first sign of problems, you start taking the twig from this account and you take it to another account. And I think that's a very valid statement. And just seeing, I don't know the dynamic between these two, if it's all just like for the show, but something is off about with how she grew up and then how this relationship, mm. it seems it seems very counter to what it should be. But yeah, but in any case, start collecting your twigs if you see problems <laughs> and put it in a separate account. But uh, good night, Kim. Bye. You too. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs> I mean, look, replay crew, you let me know as well how you feel. What do you think that happened? What happened to that $150,000? Just saying. All right, Miss Bernice is backstage. You're going to bring her up next. Let's go to Miss Bernice. Miss Bernice, you're muted. Miss Bernice. Miss Bernice. There we go. Miss Bernice. Ah, there we go. Can you hear me now? No, I can't. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Um, um, what I got from this episode is that you notice in the scene when they was all talking, the couples around, and um, Curtis was complaining about he don't have a, no time with Jackie, mm -hmm. and and um, Eugene said he said, "Well, I work nineteen hours, twenty hours, and I come home, I'm tired." And he said, "I find out other ways I can help my wife." Mm -hmm. And you know, like if I if it means that I have to take down her hair, and all the men is gonna frown up their faces and stuff. All your lot, all your wives wear wigs and and weeds. If I'm helping her take down her hair, I'm bonding with my wife. Mm. You know how personal it is when you trust somebody to be in your head. <laughs> Honestly, if I'm gonna help you take it down, what you got to do now? You gotta wash and condition your hair. Do you know how how good it feels to have your head massaged? You being intimate with your wife. Good point. So so Curtis is sitting up there like a little kid and with his thumb in his mouth, for you, you not spending no time with me. <laughs> Come on, Curtis. Really. All Come right. on now. All right, Miss Bernice. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Miss Bernice is hilarious. I can't. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for the super chat. Alex says, everything I say is alleged. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We well, start off like that. But this source is very trustworthy to me because she gave me some tea on Diddy. That sounds very true. Let me know if you want it. Well, Alex, send it Send it to the hotline or something. <laughs> Let me know. I look, and y'all also know, I'm not pressed for having exclusives. If they come to me, they come to me. If they don't, look, I will, I will talk about it. I... People send me stuff all the time. I'm like, unless I can verify it or at least cooperate it, I usually don't run with it, but you can send it over. We'll see. <laughs> Look, we'll see. All right. Tyler's backstage. You're going to bring up Tyler next. Tyler, what's going on? Hi, Kempire. So two things. First, I agree with the earlier caller about Kwai. I just think that if they really wanted her off the show, they should have kept her and see how she does not fit in this current group and see how she kind of interacts with Sweet Tea and all that. And I think that would have been a perfect way to kind of phase her out. Mm. Not in a bad way, but just kind of complete her story. I think that they kind of bought her another season, if you will. Mm. Because the, a lot of people are saying, you know, some people are she should be here. Some people are saying she shouldn't. On the Toya thing, I feel two type of ways. I think she, I love the fact that she expresses how she feels and 
she's open and honest. And I think that her and Eugene do love each other and she's not using him. I just think certain things she should hold back on TV. Yes. That's the thing. But I do feel like he allows her to be open and honest. And I think she does it for him. He just doesn't do it on TV. And mm. that's where the issue comes in. It. But that's all. Thank you, Tyler. You're welcome. Bye. All right. <clears throat> Let me say thank you. We had a couple of super chats. Uh, Elijah, thank you so much for the super sticker. We appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Let me get to the next caller. Once I scroll all the way down. There we go. All right. Rashawn, we're going to bring you up next. What's going on, Rashawn? Hello, Kempire. How hey, are you? I'm well. How are you? I am well. I cannot wait for you to come to Atlanta. July 12th. I cannot wait. So this season, um, it was kind of a big blur. Now I'm all in for quad. I love quad. I'm a part of the quad quad. Uh oh. <laughs> Taurus. I'm a Scorpio. I love Tauruses. Okay. Good. Good. So, good. <laughs> yes. I think that we should have gotten more from her this season, and I have to say a lot about Tacky Toya. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Honey, don't you have any business of your own? I mean, you in Phaedra and Apollo's uh, business and you're in Dr. Alicia and Dr. Kim's business. Like, don't you and Dr. Eugene have business of your own? Because you seem to spend your time in other people's marriages. But it's all good because we're going to keep letting you live it up, playing tennis, not paying your taxes, the multiple houses that you have. We're going to keep letting you do that. Okay, honey? I'm just ready for this finale and I'm ready for the reunion. And I'm ready for her to be read for Phil. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's all that I have. Thank you, Rashad. Take care. Thank you. Yes, Atlanta. I will see you guys July 12th. And we have more dates coming, guys. More dates are coming. Uh, but right now, you can buy tickets for our Philly date, March 7th. That's coming up in just a couple of weeks. I will be in Boston May 30th. And after that, I will be in Atlanta July 12th. Go get your tickets because you see Atlanta is coming out hard, too. Atlanta's ready. Look, Atlanta's ready for us. All right. All right. Um, did I get every? Yes, I got every one. All right. Live chat. I would drop the call in link, but it's almost dinner time, so I'm not going to. <laughs> next time. Next time. We, we, we have the reunion to talk about everything that's played out during the season. We will also have. We we'll also have next week's season finale for Married to Medicine. We got a lot. We got a lot more coming up in regards to Married to Medicine. But if you're part of the replay crew, be sure to let us know your thoughts on this week's episode of Married to Medicine and, you know, how you would rate it from one to ten. All right. Shout out to our members. We appreciate their month monthly support. Shout out to our subscribers. And of course, shout out to our King's Guards for always holding us down in the live chat and in the comment section. I will see you guys then. All right. You can already tell from my voice. It's time for me to go. <clears throat> It's time for me to go. I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of your, your Monday. I will see you tomorrow for our Tuesday takeover at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Bye, y'all.
but tomorrow.